Aeneas and his men anchor his boats off the coast of Italy. Aeneas goes to Italy, where the present-day town of Naples is. Aeneas walks to the temple of Apollo in hopes of being able to travel to the underworld. He meets Sybil, a priestess. Make your request. Please let the Trojans settle in Latium. More troubles and trials come in your future. They say you can get me into the underworld. I wish to see my father's spirit. I can, but you first need a sign. There's a forest near here. Find a golden branch. If the branch breaks easily, the fates are calling you to the underworld. Aeneas goes to the forest in hopes of finding the golden branch. Two doves come to him and lead him to the tree with the golden branch. Aeneas, thank you. <laughs> Aeneas goes back to the temple and shows the branch to Sybil. She leads him to the river Styx. No one that is living may cross the underworld. But I have a stick. Oh, okay. Come in. Bring a stick. <laughs> Aeneas meets Dido in the fields of mourning. Hello, Dido. I miss you. I did not leave you because I wanted to, but because gods the gods demanded me to. Dido does not pay attention to Aeneas and goes to her husband, Sacius, who is also dead. Aeneas cries for her. Aeneas passes through the field of war heroes and sees many of the soldiers that died in the war. At last, Aeneas comes to the blessed groves where the good go to die. He finds his father, Achesis. Hello, my son. I know why you have come. You wish to know the future of your lineage. Romulus will found Rome, one of the leaders of Rome, and Caesar will come from the line of your son. As Canius, come will reach a glorious golden age and fall over the world. Aeneas finally understands why his journey to Italy is so important. Aeneas leaves the underworld and goes to his ship, and they sail off. Aeneas sails off. The end.